giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So let's hop into it. Two weekends ago, Worcester Polytechnic Institute hosted one of the longest running off-season events in FRC, Battle Cry at WPI, uh, in their 20th season. It often attracts some big names like 195, the Cyber Knights, 2168, the Aluminum Falcons, and this year, 2791, Shaker Robotics. Now, I bet most of you guys here haven't seen this match, but it's one of the best examples I've seen of how an adaptive strategy can turn the tide against a rigid one which makes it worth a breakdown, especially with IRI coming up and all. So before we even get into this round robin match, let's talk a bit about these alliances. Because yes, there was a reason that 2791 and 195 aren't together. First seed scorches, so 2791 ends up the fifth seed, 195 captains the sixth seed. And there's 15 alliances, all teams play in playoffs. Yes, it was a bit strange. I'll drop the link in chat if you're interested in like to fully investigate this wackiness. So 2791 picks up 6328 in the first round. Um, they're worth mentioning uh, because they built a completely new robot for this event. They rebuilt their in-season robot, which, by the way, won two banners. Um, and then there's a pretty large drop off in quality of offensive robots. So 195, the next captain, picks up one of the best defenders in this game. 1073, opting to pick up a mid-tier on the way back. They pick up 501. And 2791 picks up defender 3623, who was actually third on their defense list. So 2791 has a power alliance, 195 has a power alliance, and it's all going to come down to strategy when these two face off. So we start the match, and it's two up, one down red, two up, one down on blue. And it gets off to a pretty normal start. 2791 in the middle of the blue side goes off, does their thing, as does 195 on red. Um, they all move forward, and red starts with panel up. 3623 on the close blue side drops their panel right after Sandstorm so that they can get a head start on playing defense on 195. Uh, they're actually going to knock them, um, once they get over to the red side, just enough so that 195's placement stumbles and the hatch hangs on just by a thread, making it nigh impossible to get cargo on the level there. So you can pause at 122 left here. Um, and contrary to 3623's maneuver, 1073 still trying to get that hatch on the front there, perfectly trying to trap the cargo and the panel in there all at once. And that opens up an opportunity for Shaker Robotics, who's on the far blue side alliance. Shaker is going for their second teleop hatch cycle um, on the close side because they've placed the hatch that they have gotten in autonomous on the far side because it's much easier to place a close hatch when you're being defended because of just the sight lines and how easy it is to see there. Um, and that's coming from just the few seconds of 1073 not being there. Over the course of this match, we're going to see Shaker focus on hatch panels and giving those opportunities to 6328 to capitalize. On. 6328 is currently on the blue side, close of the field, and they're trying to chase down a rogue cargo. You can hit play again. We'll see. We'll watch this go for about a few seconds until about 110 here. Uh, so 10, 1073 comes over. Uh, they start playing defense on Shaker, trying to mess them up. Um, and then 110. So here, 25 seconds into Teleop, we're going to see some pretty even strategies. One defender on the most powerful offensive robot, the other robot popping in whatever they can on their side of the field. So what makes the big difference in this match? What really takes this match from being like a one point difference to the spoiler alert, nearly 10 point difference in favor of the blue alliance in the end? Especially in this matchup, that 195 on paper should have won based on their stats. It's going to come down to the Blue Alliance strat here, and that's why I've chosen this match to go over the epic rhythm and flow of this alliance, adapting to the defender and scoring what's available on the field. Now, we've seen this happen in great alliances. I can think of a few times in, like, MSC, Detroit, Houston, uh, fancy swerve drives, and just off the top of my head. But <clears throat> the Blue Alliance here, they've got a few key differences from those top players. For one, 1073. They're arguably the best defense robot in the world. And two, 6328 can, for the sake of this argument, only score cargo. 
And really, this is no world stage. This is an off-season event in the middle of Massachusetts in June. It's, yeah. <laughs> so let's look at 195's positioning right now. Red far side, uh, near the rocket, between the rocket and the cargo ship. Um, they're not going to move from that far side station, from that far side rocket, from that far side cargo ship for the rest of the match. Um, and when we unpause, we're going to watch 2791, who's on the far side of blue, um, and how they adapt to 1073 coming to their side of the field. So they don't go to the far side feeder station that 1073 is blocking off, and instead they kind of just go over to the close side station. 1073 then switches from defending them to not defending them to 6328 to Shaker again, and at that time they've left Shaker open to do their thing. Shaker gets a panel up, 6328 gets to the other side of the field, and Shaker gets ready to get another panel. Hopping back to the red side, 195 has placed their first and second teleop cycle. They're a few seconds behind Shaker's pace, and that'll be a cargo in the cargo ship, one in level one of the rocket and trying to maneuver through 3623's defense. So let's pause at 66 seconds. We can rewind just a little bit. Um, let's talk about opposite from 195, what's happening on the far side of the blue field. 6328's just doing their thing. They've driven away from the defense. They're pumping in those cargo points. That's what they're good at doing. And that's where 2791 started the match. 2791 started the match by opening up those opportunities with the hatch panels on the rocket for them to just do their thing, put balls in. I think 6328's at like four cargo now, five, and we're only like halfway through this match. <clears throat> Blue is really playing the strategy of getting openings for their undefended robot, which they can do by filling the level one hatch places for 6328 to pop cargo into. This is in direct contrast to the Red Alliance's bid of staying in the two lanes with their two robots and the two stations that don't touch ever, despite whatever defense there is. The alliances do run into each other. They're about to here. Yes, they're human. We can't all be 254. Um, <laughs> on the red far side, 501's going to try to place a hatch on 195 side. And on the blue far side, 2791 swerve, swerves lanes a little bit too much. They go into 6328's corner. But... They peel back eventually. They load up the rocket a bit more. So we're going to see 2791, 6328, switch blue sides again, and then again. And it's important to the situation that they're not just switching for no reason. They've got a reason. 6328 has got their cargo base filled. 2791's filled the rest of the plant panels where 6328 can need to complete level one. Um talking to them, talking to the people on 2791, their strategy was to switch every time they had A, a communicated opening, and B, whenever they had completed placing two game pieces. Whether that be two, four, or, you know, 20, um, it's just whenever they had two openings that the other team could get to. So we're going to unpause here, and now, at, around this time, the Red Alliance comes to the realization that they're losing the match by about 10 points. And they know that they're going to have to make a change on the fly. So they try to free up 195 as much as possible. So 501 is going to start playing pretty count pretty effective counter defense on 3623. And 195 starts to catch up. But 501's been pulled away from scoring, so will it be enough? Uh, just as this starts happening on the edge, of the blue close side of the field, 1073 catches 2791, uh, finally caught up to them, and the score is getting pretty a lot closer. Um, but then the undefended 6328 starts popping in cargo from the other side of the blue field, bringing up their score. 501 goes to climb on red, and 2791 on blue just thinks a little bit about getting some cargo. It kind of messes them up for their climb, but don't worry, they'll be fine. Uh, 195 scores a cargo on the cargo ship for red, tries to go for another, but gets defended by 3623, who is still over there. You can't see them. They miss, and then they try to yeet themselves onto level one, and they just miss that as well. Backing off. So that's the match. <clears throat> Blue ends up winning by about 10 or 12 points. 
with that really fluid strategy and good alliance synergy. Just the balance between Shaker and being defended and placing opportunities rather than going for the maximum points and 6328 going for those undefended points with the direct comparison to the kind of meta strategy that we've developed of two lanes. That's what really makes this match in particular one of my favorites from the 2019 season. Just the really collaborative sense of this alliance. It's not one robot that's playing this game. It's really all three of them. And it makes me think, is this going to become the offseason meta? I mean, I think we're going to see the switching sides with defense sort of thing at IRI for sure. But at your local offseason event with 24 teams that all know and practice together, I really don't think it's that far-fetched. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, I just started coughing. Uh, because it's this you started to see this even late in the season. Like it was uh yeah. like we started to see this in some <clears throat> of the divisional playoffs. Yeah, for didn't, sure. Didn't really come into play a ton in the Einstein finals, um, just because of the composition of the alliances. I think right. that was just part of it. Uh, but I think it's definitely I mean, I was we were start I I was just at Big Bang this past weekend, which was, you know, a tiny little off season with twenty four teams. And it's that was kind of how a lot of the Elims were playing, especially it was really funny to watch because it was 33 in their practice robots. So they were identical. So they would just keep switching sides. I think the defenders just got confused because, mm -hmm. you know, you got two identical yeah, yeah. robots, but they were definitely like doing a lot of weaving and flipping back and forth, which definitely helps when, you know, you not only, not only share a practice space, but you don't know, have the same robot, but, um, <laughs> but it was definitely, they weren't the only ones doing it. And definitely. I think that's what they've started to do, even at this little off season and Taylor. Yeah, I was watching a bit of the Big Bang this weekend, and I definitely noticed that. So that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably have to agree with Audrey um, and both PJ too, I guess. But I definitely think that um, the more people are going to see it, the more people are going to do it. Um, I mean, like my opinion, I saw it, and I think it looks pretty pretty nice, and I'm competing this weekend. So don't be surprised <laughs> if you see that. But um, no, I think, uh, I, yeah, like I said, it's going to, I think, you know, as the game evolves, obviously the different strategies are going to come out. And like PJ said, we started to see it a little bit in the divisional round, but um, I think at IRI, it's going to be a known thing that it's just going to happen. So we need your help to keep fun loud, live and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates. Now you can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.